Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today. Uh, it's Jonathan Simon here. Um, we'll allow a couple of minutes to people uh, for people to join and then uh, we'll start. Hey Alexandra. Oh, we have a great bunch of people here today. Nice to see you all again. Hey, Andre. Cool. And during the, the, the talk, we'll have uh, some time for questions at the end. But if you have any questions, feel free to drop them on the chat uh, to the right. And uh, Simon and me will, will try to uh, get to those either during the talk or towards the end. Cool. So I think we can start. Uh, Simon, you want to take it from here? Sure. Uh, so yeah, welcome everyone. Super glad to see that there's already quite a few uh, people around here. So um, this is going to be about in-app events. Uh, just before we get started on the actual topic, uh, please bear with us a couple of uh, commercial slides uh, as usual. So. Uh, first of all, if you don't know me, I'm my name's Simon. I'm head of ACE with AppTweak. Uh, so I've personally been uh, working around ASO for a little over four years now. Um, I work at AppTweak to support our uh, clients, whether app or game developers, uh, in their ASO strategies uh, across various regions of the globe, various app verticals. So um, for any questions, you'll have my contact and uh, team is around uh, team, my team is also around the chat. So uh, feel free to reach out at any time. And for uh, the additional plug, uh, I do want to mention that uh, I'm currently looking for more uh, ASO experts to join my team, both in Europe and the US. So uh, if anyone knows about anyone looking for something, uh, feel free to reach out to check out AppTweak's job page uh, and we'll be happy to start a conversation there. Now, if you don't know about AppTweak, uh, AppTweak is the uh, number one ASO tool uh, for apps and games. Basically, uh, our platform, uh, our platform's mission is to fuel the growth of the most popular apps and games uh, with two things that are actionable insights and a simple interface. And so more concretely, what that means is that we offer four main types of services on our platform. These are ASO intelligence, uh, everything you need to know about keyword and competition when it comes to uh, ASO, search ads intelligence, uh, and I'm sure we're going to talk about search ads at one point during this webinar because it's unavoidable when speaking about Apple these days. Uh, app intelligence and market intelligence to help you also kind of stay, take a step back and uh, adopt a more strategic view on how your app is performing or what are the market opportunities that you should know about? Uh, so this is basically about AppTweak, and I'm sure, Jonathan, you also have a lot of things to say about uh, Storm Maven. Sure, I'll try to make it quick so we get uh, straight to uh, the interesting part. Uh, I'm Jonathan, I'm uh, VP Marketing at Storm Maven. I had the, the pleasure uh, to work with uh, a lot of mobile marketing teams uh, during the last uh, five years uh, in the mobile marketing industry. I just want to say that everything will be okay. I, I had to choose which message I put here, so I decided to put that because uh, I know that the industry has been through a lot in the past couple of years with the IDFA, now with iOS 15 and all these new features. Uh, marketing has existed before and will exist afterwards, uh, so just everybody stay calm. Uh, also, a fun fact, I'm at ranked number uh, two among amateur snooker player in Tel Aviv. I really like snooker. Uh, it's not a great achievement, but I'm uh, working on it. Um, for those of you that don't know Stormhaven, uh, we provide the technology and uh, services and consultancy around ASO and mobile growth. Um, <clears throat> we're basically helping teams creating uh, app store product pages that, that perform at scale for each and every 
paid and organic audience and install funnel. So historically, we've been an A-B testing company, uh, testing uh, product pages uh, on the Store Maven testing platform. Uh, with iOS 15, we, we were really excited to uh, launch a new and improved platform that provides uh, teams with a full install funnel optimization solution. And what I mean by that is a full solution. I won't go into all of the details. You can check it out, th this link afterwards, and also sign up to get early access. But basically, everything from connecting to all the relevant data sources and identifying uh, install funnel opportunities where you should focus on organic search, certain networks, certain campaigns, uh, and helping you um, produce creative briefs uh, really quickly and based on the data that we accumulated here over the past six years. Um, we're also going to uh, provide the creative design services to create these product pages. Uh, and support testing, doesn't matter where it is, if it's natively on Apple, on Google Experiments, uh, testing custom product pages, supporting product page optimization, leveraging our statistical engine to make sure that you run these tests in the most accurate way, and managing all of the, the, the crazy operation that uh, comes with uh, managing dozens and dozens of product pages um, for each and every country and helping you monitor and report and analyze on the performance of each and every funnel with smart alerts uh, so you can get on top of uh, changes in performance uh, before they become a problem. So more on that in the link, uh, but at this point, I'll uh, give the stage back to Simon. But before we start, Simon, I thought it's gonna be interesting to ask you, what do you think is the strategic rationale behind Apple releasing uh, in-app events uh, to the store? Uh, there, there's kind of multi, uh, multiple layers here, and I, I, I know we we discussed about this a bit prior to the event, so uh, I, I also want to, to have your opinion. Um, I, I think the first layer is just purely when it comes to in-app events. Um, it's, uh, there's a, a, a rationale that is going to be uh, just matching very fast what Google Play is doing because they uh, unveiled a smaller version of in-app events uh, only accessible to games um, on their platform already a couple of months ago. I think it's still in beta. So here we have kind of the first, uh, the first step is just matching what Google is doing to maintain their uh, position as uh, the app store being the more uh, complete store. And this goes to the other layers where I'm sure you have a lot of opinions because what we've seen with the overall iOS 15 announcement, I think, was suddenly a lot of marketing tools being put out there. Um, I would say it technically started in iOS 14 when they uh, added uh, iOS app clips. Uh, but so far, I haven't seen too much adoption of that feature, probably because it's, it's considered quite complex. And so there's now this big push to having the store, the app store, be a central uh, platform in the marketing of all apps. And I think it's super, like we, we have to uh, not be naive about why this is happening because it's definitely a timing when Apple is facing a lot of criticism, science, a few legal actions mm -hmm. on, uh, well, multiple aspects, but I think a big one is the fact that they're currently taking 30% off almost everyone's in-app uh, purchase revenues, uh, or at least after you've made your first million dollars. And so this is a situation where um, it is it is a good step. It, it, it is a step in the right direction of kind of empowering developers to, to, to do more on the marketing side within the App Store as a way of saying the money uh, that Apple is uh, taking out of the purchases is also something that uh, comes from services that are being provided here. Yeah, I, I, I also think, I mean, I think about it more uh, even long term. Like the move that Apple started with uh, the deprecation of the IDFA to me was a signal to the market uh, and to all ad networks, Facebook, uh, Google, and, and all of the other networks, that they want to be the place where users discover apps. Uh, before that, the vast majority of this uh, of app discoverability, both apps and games, happened on on networks such as Facebook, uh, and they, uh, with the deprecation of IDFA, they really strengthen their ad network search ads, 
which kind of live outside of this uh, ecosystem of all the other networks that are uh, that need to uh, follow the the guidelines that have, Apple have set. Um, and I think they're really trying to improve uh, to, to give these tools to improve uh, discoverability on the App Store um, for that for that purpose to make sure that most users come to the App Store to to discover new apps and games. And in-app events is definitely one of these things. I think. Uh, I think that's uh, that explains a lot of the rationale. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's all coming into the same place, basically. And uh, I, I think if you look at the uh, largest vision I can think about right now, yeah. it's also where you get to see sort of the shift in how Apple started as a company with a vision which was challenge a very big market leader in computers at the time with IBM. Yeah. Now they've uh, progressively become the leader to the point that they can now uh, force certain standards on the rest of the industry. And mm -hmm. so it's, uh, it's an interesting move they're doing right now to kind of um, really signal that they've been behind uh, the move towards apps from the beginning. And putting more effort into the App Store is a way of saying we're coming back uh, to the initial goal of just saying whatever you're looking for is there's an app for that and it's now about helping people show that there's an app for not just the regular gameplay experience for instance but even for specific content for being competitive and so that's i think that's where we're going to be able to jump in with what in-app events actually are definitely so yeah um as a quick point of order for everyone, um, when we speak about in-app event, we should actually speak about in-app event cards because uh, Apple is not inventing the in-app events. Uh, I think a lot of game developers have not waited for, uh, waited for Apple to actually try to have these specific uh, in-app content to engage with users. Um, but so here, the big change is that the feature coming to iOS 15 is going to be publishing cards as a way to promote uh, what activity is taking in, uh, taking place inside your app and promote it on the App Store. And so uh, it's going to be a feature that's going to be available for both app and game developers. And that's already a big difference with what we've started seeing from Google Play. And any developer will be able to create uh, a card from their uh, App Store Connect console. Now, where the cards will appear, uh, this is going to be sort of a double display system. Uh, this is going to be a card snapshot that will appear, uh, first of all, on the product page of the app. And it will appear uh, at the very top instead of the screenshots for users who have already downloaded the app. And uh, otherwise, it will appear below the screenshots is the only thing we know right now based on Google's communication. Uh, when it comes to users who haven't downloaded the app yet. Um, the next step is going to be seeing the cards not just on the product page, but elsewhere. And so what we know uh, here, it's always to be considered carefully because it's only based on the announcements from WWDC and a couple of PR uh, things afterwards. But we know they're going to be appearing in search, appearing in browse, uh, and that some of these events will even be curated by the editorial team for the Today tab and the Apps and Games tab. Uh, and so kind of, I think there's going to be a transition with the, uh, for instance, major update uh, coll app collection, which is already something that we've seen in iOS 14, but now it will be probably based on what apps have put out uh, an in-app event about a major update first. Mm -hmm. And so in terms of user experience, what people will see is a card uh, with some metadata that we're going to have a look at in a, in a moment. But basically, you have a small card. And when you tap on it, you have the opportunity to see a larger details page with a bit more information. And the very interesting thing uh, when it comes to UA is that this uh, in-app event detail page is going to have its own link. And so there could be 
uh, UA campaigns leading to leading to this. Really interesting. Yeah, I think uh, I think that link is is a big uh, thing. We'll talk about it a bit more in a bit. Yeah. Uh, so just uh, for the pure ASO part, uh, because uh, for those who know AppTweak, you won't be surprised to hear that keyword are uh, a big thing that we always look at. Um, there's going to be sort of two parts to each card uh, with some text metadata and some um, some creative metadata as well. So for text, you will have an event reference name, which will only be visible in App Store Connect. Uh, this is more or less the equivalent for an event to an app ID. Uh, and so this one is the one I believe has the least chances of being indexed by the App Store algorithm, but it's not completely ruled out because we know that on Google Play, at least the algorithm would do it. And so it's going to be interesting to test. Now, the one uh, thing that we are almost certain will be indexed is going to be the event name. Uh, and that is because Apple communicated that uh, users will be able to find in-app event cards in the search results, especially if they look for the in-app event name itself. There's also going to be a short description of 50 characters, a long description of 120 characters. For these, again, we're not sure that uh, they will be indexed, uh, but this is definitely going to be one of the first things uh, we'll advise our clients to test as well, uh, because when you're looking at some specific keywords, uh, both the ability to target new keywords or just to boost your uh, relevance for keywords that are very important by having an event that's better appropriate to convert users on a specific term. These are going to be uh, important factors in the keyword optimization strategy. And now uh, if we look also at uh, the non-text metadata, um, very important is going to be the event badge. That's basically a category. And here you'll have the choice between multiple options, uh, challenge, competition, live event, major update, new season, premiere, and special event. And I think what's really interesting here is that you can really feel that some are more game oriented. Although uh, I know apps uh, that have done a great job at gamification will still be able to look at that as well. Uh, I think for instance, um, I'm a Duolingo user and I can tell that uh, they have these challenges every month uh, on building XP and I can definitely imagine language learning apps that have these mechanisms also play on this. And you have other, uh, other type of events such as Premiere, where I would expect a lot of uh, video streaming app or music streaming app to use these types of event to really highlight new content coming to the catalog. Last part, and this is where uh, I'm sure you'll have a lot to 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 share with us, Jonathan, is uh, the event card, um, uh, the media in the event card, and uh, and in the event detail page. Both times, developers will have to choose between an image and a 30 second max video. Uh, with a post of frame, but so we know that it's going to be quite interactive. And one question I had for you is, uh, mm -hmm. if you've heard about any more specific guidelines as to whether you have to show a device or a content that is clearly uh, showing the app UI, or if you think it's going to be uh, a broader perspective in here. So we didn't hear anything yet because Apple didn't release the specification or the guidance specifically for the, these creatives. Uh, but I think we can assume from you know the example they shared uh, across their materials, which has no device, it just shows a landscape or a trail, um, that, that you'll be able to have some more freedom with these creatives. Um, anyway, we know that the Apple uh, guidelines in terms of like showing a device and showing accurate screenshots of the app um, aren't being enforced in, in an equal way. I mean, sometimes they, they allow some creatives to go through. Sometimes there's an app to reviewer that is more harsh and rejects these. Uh, but I think based on this example, I think you'll have some more uh, creative freedom here um, 
both because you can see the example, but also the, the format. It's like almost as an interstitial. So there's a lot of really creative things uh, we've started to think about uh, um, to play around with in these uh, creatives. And so do you think these will be used mostly for uh, in-store uh, advertising, in-store marketing, or external marketing in the end? It's a really great question. It, it all depends on the, on the app or the game. Um, you know, re-engagement uh, re campaigns driving uh, installs from uh, lapsed users uh, aren't anything new. I think these would be perfect to use for that because up until now, what were the options of a team trying to, um, to re-engage lapsed users? Um, and it, it, we all know that the App Store page in the past had a different layout for somebody that previously installed the app. You had the What's New section at the top, and you, if you had uh, the Closer Look video, it also appeared at the top. So you could use these assets, uh, both creative and text, to speak to these users. And we ran a ton of tests with a lot of developers, both in apps and games, uh, to see how how much effect these assets have in, in influencing elapsed users, whether to reinstall the app or not. And we saw amazing results. I mean, they really matter. So I think uh, driving them to something that doesn't have that layout and you have some more room with the creatives and of course the event name and the description, uh, I think that could uh, do miracles for UA campaigns, uh, uh, specifically targeting lapsed users. But I think because they're going to, as with any new feature in the App Store, they're going to promote it pretty heavily through personalized uh, lists in the games and, and apps tabs, uh, you know, events you might like. And in the Today tab, uh, through the editorial curation that you mentioned, uh, I guess they're going to allocate a pretty sizable portion of, of their inventory uh, towards uh, live events. Um, so I, I think it will have a lot of... Uh, a big role basically in, in driving new users as well because you know new new game content maybe speak only to lapped users but if i'm netflix and i'm uh, doing a new season of uh, stranger things uh, so you know you can think of that as an amazing entry point to the to the netflix app for a new user yeah absolutely and uh, i think that there's a fact that in this targeting of user personas uh, user profiles Mm -hmm. uh, I remember from the video from Apple that they were actually saying the default would be actually both types of users. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, the, the other question I wanted to ask is whether you've uh, had the opportunity to play around the iOS 15 better, uh, because I know that in the few days at the beginning of iOS 15 better, uh, there were a couple of uh, screenshots that were shared across the ESO community mm -hmm. where we saw that um, search results may not uh, present the screenshots of apps already installed on a device anymore. And so when we think about how uh, the in-app event card is going to have this opportunity of replacing the screenshots in multiple places, that's actually also going to be very interesting to see if there's an opportunity to have always an, an, an in-app event running just as a way of saying, if my app appears in the search results of someone who may be who also is going to see my competitors, uh, I want to keep creatives to kind of push them further down the fold uh, and force a scroll if they have to find competitors while yeah. at the same time telling them, hey, even if you're active right now, uh, have you checked out the latest content that we've released? Yeah, I, I think that the search result thing is is pretty massive. I mean, we, we still don't know, nobody, I played around with iOS 15 beta, so I saw it in action, but we don't know if it's an, a feature that uh, Apple sometimes A-B test features in the App Store in the beta, and then they disappear and never appear again. So it could be one of these things, but uh, currently what, what they're doing is, in fact, not showing screenshots or any uh, visual creatives for uh, apps in search if the user already downloaded, even if they uninstalled the app. So uh, it really limits uh, uh, the way to reappear in a user search if they previously installed the app when and you know there's some apps that this is a massive source of growth for them um th these lapsed users so i definitely agree that uh always i mean 
I, I would even say something more, something more aggressive that if you don't have an event uh, live in, in your product page, your competitors will have a huge benefit uh, for you because um, when you compete on that same lapsed user, whenever they, let's say it's a Candy Crush uh, user and they uninstall the app and they search for match three, uh, if, you, if uh, Candy Crush won't have an event card, uh, they'll be much more likely to install a competitor's app because they'll just see the text and it's very minimal, their appearance in the search results. So... Uh, I agree on that. Yeah, so um, maybe uh, I can throw it to you to to explain a bit more for how uh, they will, these events will be run and how to operate them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically, I, I just want to talk a bit about how to manage uh, these in-app events and what you can do with them, uh, taking this uh, into more... Uh, uh, more into pra practical uh, areas. So um, you can have up to five events published at the same time. So this event gallery that you see here on the left uh, device uh, will be able to have five events in it. Um, but you can submit uh, to rev for review up to 10 events for, for pre-approval, independent from app version. So you can basically, they did that so you can prepare in advance for events and have a seamless uh, way to uh, launch new events on your product page without waiting for, for that review. Um, I think it also opens up the possibility for testing in-app event cards and uh, dynamic optimization. For example, have uh, two different ways to uh, talk about the same event and uh, play around with them. Make sure that one of them is present in weekdays and one of them is present in weekends, for example, because it's a different audience that will be attracted to this event for different reasons. Um, so this is really, really exciting. And uh, in terms of the timelines, uh, an event can live up to 31 days, but you can promote it up to 14 days before the event where the notify button, which, uh, which is uh, present on the event card, uh, would do a lot, of, uh, a lot of work and will provide a lot of value because whenever users tap on that notify me button, uh, whenever the event is live, they'll be taken back to this, like they're going to get a notification on, on their device and taken back to this event card uh, to install uh, or to open the app if they're already installed it. Yeah. One question I have for you here is, what audience do you expect will be most sensitive to this button? Because um, in in its core, it it makes me think about uh, the pre-registration campaigns you can have with certain games, like pre-launching, just so people get notified on the day the, the game is actually uh, available on the store. So do you think here it's going to be something that will uh, especially impact certain uh, certain lapsed users, or is it something that will be more about, um, let's say, Netflix being able to promote their app uh, when there's a new hit show coming out? Yeah, so so I think definitely it it all depends on the motivation that users have, like everything in marketing. Um, is as more the more value the event has, uh, the, the more motivation a user would have to be notified. For example, Netflix already have this feature. You can be notified of shows when they go live, and it's uh, very it's used very broadly. Uh, so on that front, uh, I think it would be extremely useful, not only for lapsed users coming back to the app, uh, but also for new users that are downloading the app for that specific event. And existing users as well. I mean, we, we can't forget from, from that portion of the audience that uh, still hangs out in, in the App Store. I mean, you might have the Netflix uh, app already installed, but you'd see the event in the Today tab, and you can hit the Notify Me, and it will take you back to the app when the uh, whatever when the season is is uh, being uh, being aired. So I think all of these audiences will will uh, care about events and the Notify function. And I also think that it, uh, that there are certain games, uh, specifically games with a very strong brand and a large following that will enjoy this feature. I'm just thinking about, I mean, Fortnite is no longer uh, on the App Store, but I but games that have seasons and there's a lot of games like that, uh, I think that can also have a very uh, significant pull for uh, lapsed new and existing users to hit the Notify Me button. Um, I just want to answer Eric's question, what about the deep link portion of in-app events? Where do we enter the deep link? So in App Store Connect, you'll have an area where you can input the deep link. And of course, whenever a user installs or opens the app, uh, they'll be taken specifically to the, to the 
area in the app that you uh, have defined with the deep link. Um, we'll take a few more questions uh, towards the end. Yes, if you don't mind, I, I think there's one that really speaks about what we're just discussing uh, with oh, Sabrina okay. asking uh, whether notified means a push notification from the App Store or a badge on the app icon. Uh, I don't know if you've had any opportunity to test this. I, I didn't. I From what I read, because uh, uh, I didn't even see it in action in the iOS 15 beta, it's supposed to be a push notification uh, from the OS, basically from the App Store app, which is an OS app. So uh, that's uh, from my understanding, but uh, we'll see how it works uh, when it's out soon. I, I think with what we're discussing on the overall strategy, it, it would make more sense for it to be a push notification. Um, it's after all, is going to be something that more, more likely will take you to the in-app event detail page uh, rather than directly inside the app. Uh, and also you can be notified even if you haven't installed the app already. Uh, so I, I think uh, here you should expect a push notification. Sure. Um, moving towards um, how to, when, when setting up an event other than the metadata, there's a few other things that you can define. Uh, first of all, of course, the event availability, which uh, to choose the dates and times uh, in which the event uh, will run. Uh, you can select a priority, which is a really interesting concept here, because they allow you within App Store Connect to select whether the event priority is high or not. And higher priority events uh, will appear before the other events, even if it overrides the, the the traditional chronological order. So you can have yeah, you can have some control on which event card appears uh, in the first impression when somebody lands on the product page. And you know we're at Storm Event, we tested the um hundreds of millions of users and we know that the first impression is extremely important 70 percent of uh users never go past the, the first impression so you do have some uh some control on which event card appears there on the first slot in the gallery uh you need to provide a deep link as we just discussed select the cost it could be a paid event it could be a free event and a really interesting thing that you started touching before simon is the event purpose so and on default, it's going to be uh, set to appropriate for all users, which uh, basically mean, uh, let's take a step back. What, what the event purpose means is it's a signal to Apple on who you want to target with this event. It doesn't appear anywhere in the event card or the, in the event gallery. Um, and you can choose either to attract new users, to keep active users informed, or to bring back lapsed users. And what Apple has said is that this will inform them uh, to which users they should promote the app across the App Store. So imagine um, a, a gallery in the apps or games tab that says events you might like. One user, if you uh, hit the keep active users informed, supposedly only active users will see uh, your event. If you hit uh, lapped users, only lapped users will see that event. And the same goes for new users. Um, which is a really interesting feature. It goes back to the beginning of our discussion regarding strategy, because Apple is basically giving you a way to retarget users within the App Store. And retargeting is something that was hurt uh, beyond belief with uh, deprecation of the IDFA. And uh, Apple is, is kind of saying, hey, you can retarget users on the App Store. And we have so many impressions, that basically, the entire world of, of iOS uh, and iPhone users are, are visiting the App Store um, on a weekly or monthly basis, that it's a really good place to retarget them. Um, so uh, that's a feature I'm really excited about. Um, of course, all other users, it doesn't matter which, uh, which group you choose here, will be able to access the event through your product page. Um, what you can do with in-app event. So I'll just summarize what we started talking before. You can create install funnels for new users using uh, ads um, or anywhere anywhere to basically use a link to guide users towards the App Store instead of leading them to the uh, traditional product page with the icon video screenshot. You could lead them straight to an event card. Uh, you can do the same for lapsed users. And of course, you can uh, use this feature for uh, localizing events, basically creating, uh, it's another uh, aspect of localizing your product page. Uh, it can be basically localizing events, uh, not only the, the text and translation, but even like creating local events in 
for example, you have an audience in Japan, uh, they have a certain uh, holiday or something happening in Japan, you can basically create an event around that and uh, in the US do something different, which is really interesting. Uh, search visibility we talked about uh, without events. If a user have your app installed, probably they won't see your screenshots or videos any longer in search results, but they will see event, uh, event cards in search results. Um, and browse traffic, both the events you might like uh, opportunity and uh, tapping into the inventory of featuring on the Today's tab, which will be dedicated, some of it, to events. And uh, last but not least, I want to talk about the opportunity to test in-app event cards. Um, again, we're at Storm and have a lot of data about what drives users to install, and we know how, how important creatives are. With uh, by, When Apple chose to go with this design, kind of like an interstitial with one large creative uh, that could be a video up to 30 seconds or, um, or basically an image, uh, they made sure that the main factor that users will uh, that will influence users whether to install or not would be that creative uh, users don't like to read in the app store so um, testing which creatives works best for which event uh, is going to be huge in my opinion and apple is uh, has announced that a lot of data regarding in-app events uh, would be available in app store connect such as impressions app units and installs and uh, how many people tap the notify uh, the notify button and um, if and given that each in-app event has a link that you can send users straight to, um, you can technically run a test with uh, and testing which way you should uh, use in order to present the event to a certain audience. Uh, you can use an ad, or you can use email, or cross promotion, and anywhere you can use a link to drive an audience uh, randomly and evenly to different event cards, and then basically uh, test which one performs better by looking at the data in apps or connect i'm really happy to and excited to say that we are launching uh this capability within the store maven platform to facilitate the entire process of testing uh in-app events um and uh and that's it i think it's gonna have uh, a lot of impact and as i said uh the ability to upload up to 10 events and have only five published will really make it easy to uh to get through testing and make improvements in conversion rate and the install rate uh, and for events. So that's going to be huge for live ops teams, re-engagement teams, uh, and also uh, teams uh, focusing on use or acquisition. Yeah, I think this, this is the first of uh, multiple huge features. Uh, it's going to be hard to say if this one, this new iOS version is bigger or not that iOS 11 when it came out, but... Uh... I think it's bigger. I think it's bigger because for the first time, Apple is uh, is allowing marketing teams to have multiple landing pages. Up until now, you had one landing page. So the yeah. game was basically understand which converts more of the audience that you care about and choose. You don't have to choose anymore. I, I will be a tease here and say that uh, on that note, I don't know if then we should still consider this is iOS 15 because the the timeline on on the yeah. cotton products pages is a bit hazy at the moment um but i, I agree there's definitely a huge shift um and one thing i i know we want to to open it up to to the uh to the public as well so uh like if anyone in the audience has questions for sure uh you can start typing them but uh, i i do want to pick your brain a little before that because um, you talked about um, dynamic optimization uh, of the events. And so I, I wanted to pick your brain about what you think is going to be uh, the most valuable uh, funnel to kind of go from a, a certain acquisition uh, point, a first contact point with a user and drive them inside the app. What do you mean by the, the acquisition? Uh, do, do you, like, what what do you think is going to be the the most efficient use case for most uh, mm. game game developers, for instance? Because when I think about all the possibilities that you have, uh, I, I'm thinking we we see certain uh, certain marketing teams are excellent at. Uh, user acquisition on social media with social media ads. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, you have others that really rely on um, influencer campaigns. Uh, you have some that have just great virality around the brand and events naturally. So kind of wondering what, what you think is going to be the most frequent use case that people should think about. It's a really good point that you raise with influencers because I just want to say that even though Apple is calling it in events, it doesn't have to be an event per se. It can be just new content in the app. We have this new character. Uh, for example, there was one uh, company, um, can't mention their name, but they did an influencer campaign uh, somewhere with an influencer uh, promoting a certain uh, artifact in the game. Uh, and then uh, they had the the idea of matching of during the time of the influencer campaign to match uh, the product page by promoting that same artifact. It was something uh, pretty geeky, but something uh, that, that they all recognized. Uh, so influencer campaigns can definitely use an in-app event link as, as their destination. And then you can set up as a marketer an in-app event uh, talking specifically to users that came from that influencer and that promote that new game content. And then it falls under the definition of, uh, of an event. Because uh, they gave us a lot of flexibility, Apple, with uh, uh, to what we call actual events. Uh, and you asked about uh, the best use case. I think that re-engagement uh, for lapped users will definitely be a huge one here. Because um, I'm saying it just because uh, we we did a huge data study on uh, the, the preferences uh, of uh, lapsed and users uh, and how they respond to different creatives and messages on product pages. And we saw completely different preferences. Like what actually convinced a lap users to reinstall the app is uh, completely different than one convinced a new user to install an app. And I think with by Apple basically splitting um, the funnel to uh, in-app events in the traditional App Store page, uh, you can actually um, implement that. So I think that would be uh, huge. Yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm just waiting to see all the creative ways that uh, different apps are going to go about it. Because um, my first thought was uh, games that work with influencers, uh, games that try to have an eSport, uh, mm -hmm. even, uh, have a huge opportunity here to kind of get a lot of traction uh, around these pages, whereas before just branding uh, your first creative with the new season is here was not necessarily doing as much uh, uh, for them. Mm -hmm. And but at the same time, I'm I'm thinking that uh, even with active users, this what's going to be very interesting is how you can dig in App Store Connect with uh, the funnel view of how your event may even lead to uh, monetization. Uh, that was something that Apple hinted during WWDC, uh -huh. we have not seen any uh, clear wireframe or uh, console demonstration of how that would look like. But uh, wh when you think about the challenge, even with active users in certain games, it's that you know you have you you can have whales in in those games that can really bring a lot of uh, the revenue, and these tend to to be the players that complete most levels the fastest, and so pushing to them a new event regularly to say we have new content and you're not afraid and these are players not afraid to buy this is going to be something super interesting as well for sure there, there's a huge data opportunity here i mean the fact that uh, all of this data is going to be available in appster connect we all know appster connect we know it's a nightmare mo uh, most days uh, it, it requires a ton of manual work to actually get uh, to slice and dice the data in the way that that you wanna that you wanted to, but in order to answer these questions, like the one that you just asked, um, where our new platform will support uh, a, a much better way to look at this data, uh, and connecting it to revenues will be extremely interesting, I think as well. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I think we should give a, a couple. Of, we have a couple of minutes left, and there's yeah. Something. Um, so. Uh, there is a question, will the event assets have to be approved with the update app release itself, or can these be approved in Perler? Uh, it doesn't have to be tied to an app uh, version release. You can just submit them to review, um, irregardless to new app versions. Um, would choosing to be notified require a download first? Ideas? 
So I here, yeah, I, I think we discussed about it uh, a little earlier. Um, officially, it's not been presented, uh, but based on what we know of the store and especially the uh, opportunities that certain games have used to kind of do a pre-registration campaign, I, I would expect that here you won't uh, you won't require a download first. You will just be notified by a push notification sending you back to the in-app event page. And at that time, if you don't have the app downloaded on your phone, you can still just download it and then be sent straight to the event with the deep link. Awesome. Uh, Eric, I'm going to answer your question in a sec. And I'll just take a, a quick question from Anastasia. Will Apple search ads, uh, the Apple search tab, allow deep link to certain event cards with certain keywords? Simon and I talked about it before the, the webinar. Um, we still don't know. Uh, it's uh, what I can tell you about searches that it's probably going to be the first place where custom product pages are going to be implemented uh, based on a lot of consensus in the market that creative sets are actually going to be replaced with custom product pages. Uh, I still don't know if they'll allow you to use uh, to use uh, an event as, as a search ads basically and then of course have a deep link uh, with uh, with the search ad, uh, we'll have to see. But my gut feeling is that they will go there. Uh, it will pro it'll probably take some time. Uh, Eric asked something really interesting. Let's uh, try to tackle it together, Simon. Yeah. Uh, what about segmented in-app events? For example, not all our live events are available to all players. Some events are limited to players who have hit a certain level. Can we still promote those? Or should we avoid promoting any event that isn't available to everybody? So. First, let's let's unpack that. Uh, no, no pun intended, uh, Eric. Pack, <laughs> but um, I think that uh, <laughs> I made myself uh, laugh. Uh, what's important? Um, so basically, yeah, the events are going to be uh, uh, visible to anyone. So also, users that didn't hit that level will see those events. Um, but uh, I think, I mean, I don't see from a marketing perspective or a growth perspective, a problem to have an event, like a gated event. It's like an event, you promote it and you say in the creatives and the messaging, this is event for users that passed level 50 or whatever uh, whatever it is. Uh, and the deep link goes to a page that checks if they're actually a user that passed level 50 and if not, tells them to uh, keep working or something. Uh, I don't think that Apple would have a problem with that. Um, and if you, by analyzing your audience, understand that these events have, are playing a huge uh, factor in, in getting these whales to engage. And there's a lot of revenues coming in from these users. It might make sense to have that user and ignore the the probably the, the low impact it'll have on other uh, on other users because it'll probably mean very little to a new user um, or a user that didn't reach that level yet. Yeah, uh, on my end, I would say if, if you remember the uh, announcement of in-app events, uh, Apple actually specified that you could gauge the visibility of an event uh, to see whether the access is free or paying, uh, as well as whether there are in-app purchases specific to the event or not. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's the only sort of gating system you would see on the store. And so that, that's where I agree with you that um, you, you also have to think that from the player perspective, uh, your event is probably going to last a couple of days. So uh, it wouldn't make sense to tell them you're not eligible in the store because there, there are level 49. And two days later, while the event is still live, they actually uh, level up to level 50. Um, and suddenly uh, are thinking, oh, I, I, I saw I wasn't eligible when they just became eligible. And so I think the big challenge will be to deep link to the event by showing the criteria and just uh, having a positive message to for people who are not yet eligible on the in-app criteria to tell them um, like you're only uh, 500 XP uh, away from uh, getting into the event. Uh, so keep keep going. Uh, the event is still going on for. Uh, and you can even put a countdown to kind of give them a, a bit of pressure to actually go farm that ex experience to um, to make it into the event before it ends. 
Yeah, and I think Eric also it it can be it's it's a great idea for a test. I mean, it can be tested with all this data coming in to App Store Connect. You can test it and see over time does it have a positive impact or a negative impact. Um, it's definitely I don't I don't see any reason why Apple would uh, prevent you from uh, from doing that. So uh, as we said, so uh, let's test it. Um, Raul is asking what options will a developer have in case of a cancelled event. I don't think that Apple thought that far. They usually do these kind of things. They uh, solve one part of the problem, but uh, they don't think of a lot of edge cases. Um, I'm sure that over time they'll get these requests from developers and they'll have some sort of solution, but they didn't, didn't say anything about uh, canceling events. Uh, sure, Eric. Uh, you can also feel free to reach out uh, to me or Simon afterwards uh, and we can discuss this. Uh, so we are out of time. Um, so thanks for being with us today. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, Simon, I always enjoy speaking with you uh, and learning thank from you. Yeah. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining. It was a pleasure. Uh, you've been super engaged, which was always make these events and talks really fun. Uh, if you want to reach out uh, to me or Simon, here's our emails. Uh, feel free uh, to ask follow-up questions, and uh, we'll do our best to answer uh, as soon as we can. So thank you very much, and uh, enjoy the rest of the week. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.